Hello everyone, it's Professor Fiore. Today we are going to talk about a current controlled voltage source, also known as a current two voltage transducer using an op amp. One of these. So the basic idea here is you have a current source and from it you want to derive a stable and consistent voltage. Now you might think, well, I can just do that with a resistor, right? Just Ohm's law, V is equal to I times R. The problem is if you connect your load directly to your current source, then the value of the voltage, V load, is a function of R load. So what if you have circuits with different values of R load? You end up with different voltages. We want something that, regardless of what the load is, we wind up with the same voltage. Whether this is 5K or 50K, for a certain current, I want to see a certain voltage, you know, maybe one volt, two volts, you know, whatever the heck it is. All right. So what would be a typical source for something like this? What's a typical usage of this kind of circuit? Well, a digital to analog converter is a perfect example. A digital to analog converter is modeled as a current source. And again, you could just put a resistor out here, but the voltage is going to be a function of that resistance. And of course, if that value, if it's a complex impedance and changes with frequency, then we have a problem with the voltage changing with frequency. In other words, we're going to warp the spectral balance of this. So I want something that just takes this current and turns it into, in other words, as a transducer, turns it into a nice consistent voltage. So that's what we're going to do with our current voltage transducer, right? Current controlled voltage source. So what I have here is a fairly stock standard BiFET op amp, a TL071, uh, standard 15 volt power supplies. And you'll notice that there's just a single resistor out here. So this is based on parallel, parallel negative feedback. Now, if it's not immediately apparent how this is parallel, I mean, there is a split here at the input and at the output. One way to think of this is Millerize RF. And if you Millerize it, then there's gonna be an input Miller and an output miller, and those are clearly in parallel with the input and the output of the op amp. So there's your parallel parallel. And of course, built on this is the standard inverting voltage amplifier, where what we're really doing is we're going to throw a resistor out here. And what that does is it takes a voltage source that we would drive, and that resistance turns the voltage into a current. In other words, it kind of gives us the current source that we already have, right? So it kind of piggybacks on this basic circuit. So the question is, how does this thing actually work? All right. Well, remember, there are sort of two rules that we have to sort of obey, two rules we have to think of. What are the rules? The rules of the road. So we have rule number one, whenever we're looking at an analysis on these linear op amp circuits, Rule number one is the differential input voltage, also known as V error, right? The difference between the plus and minus input pins, that's approximately zero volts. Is it really zero? No, but it's really, really tiny. You know, it could be microvolts of signal. Second item, the input currents into the op amp input pins, in other words, the minus and the plus input pins, not the power supply pins, the signal pins, pins two and three in this diagram, I in of the op amp, all right? We approximate those two currents as zero. That's what we're looking at, okay? All right, so what ends up happening over here? Well, when we look at this input, this current, this produces an input current that feeds into this node right here. What do we wind up with? Well, you know, rule number one says V error is zero. So this right here is zero volts. Pin three, the plus input, is at ground. So that means pin two is nearly at ground, right? We don't say V error is zero, it's approximately zero. So we call this pin, this node right here, we refer to that as a virtual ground. So it's not a true ground, right? In other words, you wouldn't connect, um, see the ground of an oscilloscope to that point. 
but it's virtually ground, meaning it's really, 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 really close to zero volts. Okay. All right. So basically, this is sort of a, a perfect current sink for the for the source, right? That just goes right to zero volts, zero ohms. You could think of as the input impedance. Z into this is basically zero ohms. So all the current rushes to this point. Now, rule number two says the input current into the op amp is zero. So the current right here is non-existent. That means all of this current has to come up and flow through RF like this. And that will produce for a positive input, in other words, for the current direction I'm showing back here, for that input, we will have a polarity, a reference polarity, plus to minus, left to right, across the RF. All right? Now, consider this point right here at the op op amp's output. RF is connected to that point. So is our load. They share that point. They also share the other side. In other words, the bottom of our load goes to ground, but the other side, the left side of RF, goes to virtual ground. So they virtually go to the same point. In other words, they're effectively in parallel. That's a way of looking at it. So the voltage across them has to be the same. So if this current is coming in like so, plus to minus from ground up, then we would see the same thing here, plus to minus from the ground up. And that current should be flowing like this. That's your load current. So this current and the feedback current combine, and they flow back into the op amp. In other words, at this point, the op amp is sinking current. Well, looking at that potential, we are essentially saying that V load is the same as the voltage across RF. But what is the voltage across RF? Well, just by inspection, we can see, because of the reference polarity we're using, right, we're going to call this positive, this node positive, that becomes a negative I in, right, whatever the uh, generator over there is on the extreme left times RF. That's it. It's just an Ohm's law relation. All right. So RF is what sets the output voltage, not the value of our load. Our load doesn't really matter. You know, within extremes, you could clearly make our load too small and overload the op amp. But you know, within normal bounds, the value of our load doesn't matter. So this resistance, the resistance that sort of translates or transfers the current into a voltage, we give that a nice name. We call that the trans resistance of the circuit. So kind of like transconductance, right? That we see for the exact opposite. In other words, a voltage controlled current source, the exact opposite thing, right? A voltage controlled current source, VCCS, has a trans Conductance. This has a trans resistance, and that value is RF. So RF is what translates or converts the current into the voltage. All right. Okay. So let us do a few um, simulations. Right. I'll tell you what. Before before we exito this completely, let me just write that final output equation up here. Right. So we expect V load to be equal to a negative I in the generator times RF. All right, that's, that's what we expect. Okay, so we're going to come up here and do a transient analysis. Now notice our input is 0.1 milliamps peak, right? 0.1 milliamps peak. We have a resistance over here of 10K, so 10K times 0.1 mils, the mils in the case cancel, it's 10 times 0.1, which is 1. I expect a 1 volt load voltage, okay, 1 volt peak in this case. All right, so a couple things. Um, first, this is not quite symmetrical, probably because there's a small DC offset in here, but I am going to change the range on this so it is symmetrical. All right, and then we can't see this, All right? You know, what is what over here? Let's put the um, legend down here. So my IN is too small. Well, yeah, because it's 0.1 mils 
versus the one volt, right? We did in fact get the one volt we expected, but here's a little trick you can do in Tina. Just select this and then say, add new Y axis, new vertical axis, and it'll automatically scale this out. All right, so here's your, um, your I in. All right, so you're gonna use this axis out here for the voltage. This is your V load. And this inner one is the I in. You can see they color coded it green, which is the same as the uh, waveform we have. So first you see the inversion, right? You can see this thing is coming up to 100 microamps, which is 0.1 mil. Everything's great. There's my output. Looks good, right? It's the right amplitude. It's the right phase. Everybody's happy. Okay. So as I said, this should be a function of our F, not a function of our load. Well, let's go and change our load. All right. So I'm just going to double our load over here and we will see what winds up happening. You know, theoretically, I mean, if we were correct, if our analysis is correct, there should be no change. We should still get one volt out of this. And without going through all the rigmarole of rescaling, there's your V-load. You can see, yep, it's still one volt. Okay, beautiful. Let's bring this back to where it was. I want to do an even comparison. And it is, in fact, the RF that should be doing this. So let's double this up to 20K. Now we should see twice as much. Instead of a one volt peak, we should see a two volt peak output. And bingo, there we go. There's our two volts, okay? Looking beautiful. And for you skeptics out there, we'll just add a Y axis for the input just so that we can see it, all right? So there's our IN is still 100 uh, microamps, 0.1 milliamps peak. Here's the output, right? On this scale, there's our two volts out of phase, just like it should be. Everything's wonderful, okay? Beautiful. So that's the basic idea behind current to voltage transducer. You have a current source. You drive this circuit to produce a constant load. The load voltage does not depend on the load resistance. It, in fact, is a primarily controlled by this value of RF, All right? So we can see the inversion, I in times RF. RF is called the trans resistance of the circuit, right? And this will work fine up to the limits of the op amp, right? So we can't make our load so small that we run out of current over here. Um, we can't make RF so large that will produce a voltage that will cause clipping, right? So within normal operational parameters of the of the op amp itself that's all you got to worry about right so the ideal internal uh, input impedance is zero the output impedance of this thing would also be zero it's an ideal voltage source in that in that case all right beautiful beauty so if you have any questions put them in the comments be happy to answer them otherwise take care and we'll see you next time